Hello everybody, this is Chirping Matt, and it's time for a long overdue video series. I've said for a while I was going to do it, but I've been far too lazy, but I'm finally just going to get it done. An Escapist 2 speedrun tutorial series. Now you may notice the title of the video seemingly doesn't have much to do with speedrunning. Well, this is going to be more of a prologue because there's one thing in particular we need to talk about before we can even start talking about speedrunning the Escapist 2. And this will also be a message to the developers of the game. <coughs> Dear Team 17 and Moldy Tooth Studios, I cannot express how much I have enjoyed your game. Not only is it a unique concept, it's executed very well with level design and gameplay elements that truly encourage creative solutions, which is something of a rarity in most modern games. It's the reason why even after playing every prison so, so many times, I can still have fun with it because I know there's always the possibility of a better solution. Yes. Even some that you the devs never thought of. I would bet money none of you considered intentionally starting a lockdown would become a speed strategy. However, this is also a reason why I absolutely hate one update in particular. Update 10 ruined the game for me. Now don't get me wrong, a lot of the changes were great. For the most part, the game was made much more stable, and even though the crafting process is slightly slower now, I can understand why the change was made in order to prevent glitches and the like. But one specific change that was made completely soured me on the current updates. The energy nerf. I cannot defend the decision to make sturdy shovels and pickaxes require 15 energy per hit instead of the 5 it used to be. Let's talk about why this was a bad decision from a gameplay's perspective. First, in regards to chipping through walls. In general, the four most useful items for chipping through walls are the sturdy shovel, sturdy pickaxe, crowbar, and iron rod mostly because they each do 20% damage per hit. The crowbar and iron rod, though, only have durability for 7 hits, whereas the sturdy tools can do up to 20. If you only need to chip through one wall, the crowbar or iron rod is clearly the way to go, and always has been. They're much easier to obtain by doing some favors and buying one rather than having to collect all the materials and intellect to craft the tools. And though they cost 100 energy total to break through that wall, that can still be done on a full store of energy. The sturdy tools SHOULD be better for chipping through multiple walls, but because of the energy nerf, they aren't anymore. To chip through two walls, you'd need two crowbars and or iron rods, but just one sturdy tool. It's generally still easier to find multiple crowbars or iron rods, but now you need 200 energy, so you either need a LOT of energy consumables, or you need to waste a lot of time regaining energy. The sturdy tools used to have a distinct advantage here since they would only cost 50 energy to get through both walls. It takes more work to get one, but the reward is an actually quicker chipping process. With the sturdy tools needing 15 energy per hit, the total cost rises to 150, barely any lower than doing it with crowbars or rods. And when you take into account the need to get intellect, the sturdy tools will actually cost more energy in total. Even if you use the intellect cancelling exploit, you'd have to spend 90 energy just to get the intellect to make a sturdy tool. Spending 90 energy to save 50 labor is objectively not worth it. You would need to break four walls before the sturdy tool becomes more energy efficient than the crowbars and rods. And I can't think of a time I've ever needed to break through more than just two walls. The energy nerf made the sturdy tools completely obsolete for chipping purposes. But what about digging? With very few exceptions, digging is only useful to get under a tile blocking your way to an escape. In this situation, the minimum tiles you would need to dig through is four. One to go down, two across, and one back up. When it costs five energy per hit, this requires 100 total energy with the sturdy shovel, or 80 total energy with the sturdy pickaxe. At 15 energy per hit, this becomes 300 or 240, respectively. That is ridiculous. What this means is that unless you stock up almost 200 energy worth of consumables, you cannot perform a useful dig in one go. And one reason this is unacceptable is that you literally made a prison where that's required for perimeter breakout. The other main reason goes back to that idea of creative solutions. The multitude of different ways to achieve almost every escape is what makes the game fun, and why most of the people who still play the game are those who found and embraced those creative methods. But that energy nerf makes some of the creative escape methods either needlessly tedious, or else completely unviable. 
As an example, let's look at the way I tried to do Perimeter Breakout when the Wicked Ward map was released alongside Update 10. Wicked Ward is surrounded by a breakable wall you need to get through in order to do the Perimeter Breakout. Before you can get to that wall, you have to get past an electrified fence, which is no easy task. A tricky solution I found was to get a red key to get into the visitor's room and then dig under the wall only because you can't chip through it. It was in theory a quicker, but by no means easy solution. But the energy nerf killed that idea. Unless I was lucky enough to find bunches of energy consumables, including at least one adrenaline shot, the need to keep resting my energy made the process so long that the hole would often be discovered by a guard before I was even finished digging, making it impossible to do at night time. Plus, it would make me miss so many routines that the dogs would usually already be out and about, making it unreliable during daytime as well. Thus, the energy nerf was directly responsible for making an alternate solution completely unreliable. I'm, I'm not saying every possible idea someone has should work. There does need to be some limits. But when a change takes an entire mechanic completely out of the equation for creating a viable solution, it's time to go back to the old way. So there's my plea to the devs to please undo that change. So what does this have to do with learning to speedrun The Escapist 2? Well, like we mentioned, Fort Tundra Perimeter Breakout requires digging. And unfortunately, it is the faster method, putting anyone running the game on the newest version at a disadvantage. This is the reason I still run the game on Update 9. How, you ask? Well, that's what we're really here for. The big spiel about the digging nerf was just to explain why I do. The real meat of this video is showing you how I do it so that you can, too. In fact, I'm going to show you how to do it for any game, not just The Escapist 2. If you only care about getting going with speedrunning The Escapist 2, I'll put a timestamp here for you to skip to. If you follow text instructions better, I'll link the Reddit post I learned it from. Downloading an old version of a Steam game is done through steamdb.info. Search for the game you want and click on its app ID. Then go to Depots on the sidebar and find the one for your operating system. Click on the Depot ID and then find Manifests on the sidebar. You'll have to know when the update you're looking for came out. In this case, Update 9 for The Escapist 2 came out on September 14th, so this is the manifest ID we need. Now we have all the ID numbers we need, we can start downloading the previous version. First, you need to go into Steam and disable auto-updates for the game, so that you can actually play the old version without Steam trying to overwrite it with the newest update. Then, open the Steam console. There's a few ways to do this, but the easiest is to open the Run Prompt for Windows, or the equivalent on OS X or Linux, and type steam colon slash slash open slash console. Now that you're here, you need to run the download depot command to get the old version of the game. Type in the console download underscore depot, the app ID of the game, the depot ID for your operating system, and the manifest ID you looked up on SteamDB. Then press enter and Steam will start downloading the files. You will not see the progress, but rest assured if you entered it right, it is downloaded. When the download finishes, Steam will tell you where it put the files. You'll want to back these up somewhere. What I do is go to the location of the game's files and create two new folders. One for the backup of the old version I want, and one for the backup of the current version. This lets me switch between them easily. When you want to play the old version, cut and paste the files for the up-to-date version into its appropriate backup folder. Then copy and paste the old version backup into the main folder. Now when you load up the game, you'll be playing on the old version of the game. If you want to switch back to the newest version, just do the reverse. Keep in mind that when new versions come out, you need to tell Steam to start downloading them manually, since you had to turn off automatic updates earlier. So that's all for now. You heard my semi-rant about the energy nerf, and I've showed you how to back install the old version of the game. Next time we'll start getting into the strategies you need to know in order to do the all-prison solo speedrun of The Escapist 2.